In the past seven years, Neighbours Day has escalated from humble beginnings to its current standing as a National Day of Awareness. To chat about the message behind the day, we're joined by founder Andrew Heslop. Hi, morning, Andrew. Andrew. Good morning, David. Good morning, Kim. What is, uh, explain to us what Neighbour Day is. Neighbour Day is a day on the last Sunday in March every year to develop relationships with the people who live around you, who live across the road, or if you live in the bush, on the next farm. And it started off in Melbourne in 2003 after the body of an elderly woman, Elsie Brown, was found in her home. And Elsie had been dead for two years mm. until her neighbours worked out she'd gone missing from their community. So yes, and there are similar stories. I remember there were a couple in Sydney as well and, and one in far north Queensland where a similar thing happened. I mean, it's, it, it just is staggering to believe that someone could go unnoticed. That's exactly right and, and particularly in th today when both parents are working and we've uh, developed a situation where we've got fatter, we're not doing enough exercise, we're eating the wrong foods, I think we've lost the opportunity to walk around our suburbs and get to know the people who live around us and so Neighbour Day is about taking back those streets, about developing those relationships, uh, not only for your health but also for the health of your community. What, what difference does it make? What difference does knowing your neighbour bring to them and to you? Well, I think what we saw in the bushfires in Victoria most recently and the floods in North Queensland and New South Wales, it was your neighbours who, was, who were the most help to you before the emergency services yeah. arrived. So particularly when you live in the bush, that's absolutely integral. But even, you know, in urban areas, knowing who your neighbours are gives you a sense of community, you feel a part of a community and then you begin to care about it. So when things go wrong or something happens at home, you've got someone who you can turn to instantly for help. Yeah, what seems... sort of... Yeah. Sorry, I was just going to say, seeing the reaction uh, from the bushfires, from the floods, that neighbourly spirit clearly exists. It just seems to need something to bring it out, doesn't it? Yeah, you're right. And it's one of the things that most came out of Talkback Radio, not only up here in Sydney but around the country, is it really gave Australians a wake-up as to why they should have good relationships with their neighbours. Of course, not all of us do live in those bushland areas, but it just reinforced the fact that that security, that knowledge, that help that's always there can only come from your neighbour. And I think um, if there's one thing that's come out of the bushfires and the tragedy behind that is that it's given Australians a greater sense of celebrating their community. Yeah. Councils have really got behind the day because they work out that it can be a great way to brand your, your council and tell your residents about the services, libraries, rate paying, all yeah. of that sort of thing mm. that you offer, kindergartens. But, um, f you know, just for us, it's, it's barbecues on your front lawn. I'm having the neighbours over for a 9am breakfast on Sunday morning. Um, oh, you but rat. It, it can be as... Yeah. <laughs> but can you make it at 10.30 as... or something? <laughs> well, you know, it's a big day. But, it, you know, it can be as basic as a cup of tea and a slice of cake with the people next door or in the next apartment. It doesn't have to be a street party, although in Kalgoorlie, uh, the neighbours there are closing off the street and they're having this huge ding-dong celebration, which is fantastic. Oh, I so love it. So I love that sense of yeah, community. So it's great. There's, there's, no, there's no donation, there's no ribbon, there's no cash outlay. It's just getting together with your... Your it's a cup of tea, it's a cup of coffee, it's, it's as basic as that. I was talking to um, the Housing Minister, Tanya Plibersek, yesterday and she's just moved house recently and she's getting her neighbours over on Sunday morning as well. So uh, if Tanya Plibersek can do it and Prime Minister Kevin Rudd came out as a big supporter this year, which is the first time a Prime Minister has done that, um, it's a great way to get to know the people who live around us. Mm. Do you think that uh, organisations such as the, well, the Vol Volunteer Fire Brigade, the SES, uh, scouts and, and guides, do you think they're under threat because we seem to be lacking this neighbour, neighbourly spirit? I mean, that, that all expects us to contribute to the community, doesn't it? Yeah, look, I think um, having worked for Australian Red Cross, one of the biggest challenges is that branch-based system where you expect people to come to a meeting once a fortnight mm. or once a month at a Tuesday afternoon. That's changed, and as you saw in the bushfires, particularly with Australian Red Cross, trained uh, first aid responders, trade emergency and uh, registration inquirers, people who can be... Uh, learn skills that can be activated in an emergency to come together and I think that's the model of volunteerism into the future. Like we've all got uh, kids sports clubs that we're involved with and parents involved in uh, in the community groups through the schools but you know there's a limit to what you can do and so I think the spirit of volunteerism is, uh, is changing quite a lot around Australia. It is indeed and look it's going to be a great day on Sunday. Thank you so much for chatting with us Andrew. Thanks Andrew. Thanks again.
You know, one of the things Simon always says when he's out with the SES, when there's a, you know, floods, rains, storms, whatever, people are always stunned that they don't have to pay for it. They're stunned. They, they're kind of going, you guys do this for nothing? Yeah. And they're like, yeah, and see, that, why would you do that? And he says, well, that's our community yeah, involvement. That's you know? the truly neighbourly spirit, isn't it? It is, isn't yeah. it? Helping someone when they need it. All right, one of the features of the Formula One Grand Prix is the ladies' lunch. And after the break, we'll see how Anne-Marie Bigger fared among the canapes and foie gras.